testing, one, two, three. Good, awesome. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Allen. I have a passion for fashion. I love shopping and I'm excited to be a part of the team that's making the experience easier and more engaging for consumers. I'm sure like me, you find yourself doing the majority of your shopping online. It's very convenient. However, flat 2D pictures don't give you the exact details of the product you're looking at, so you can be taking the risk of it not meeting your expectations or not fitting you. These are top consumer frustrations. First is when you go into a brick and mortar store and have the real thing in front of you to touch, feel, or try on before you buy. Insufficient product imagery and not being able to evaluate in person. Not being able to touch and feel and see what that product is really like. Next thing you know, it's delivered at your door and it doesn't meet your expectations. All the excitement of waiting goes out the window, leaving you with the hassle of making a return and the disappointment of not getting what you wanted. The more dissatisfactions and returns from consumers, the more problems and loss for businesses. In the US alone, Statista estimates return deliveries will cost 550 billion by 2020. That's 75% higher than four years prior. The highest cost driver is that people are, are purchasing multiple variations of the same product with an explicit plan to return all or some of their items. We want to empower you, the creator community, to unlock the next generation of shopping convenience. Spark is going to help you unlock tremendous value for both businesses and consumers. For consumers, it's being able to interact with a virtual product to, to see how it looks on them, on their person, or in their space for more durable and confident purchase decisions. For businesses, it's about increasing sales, reducing returns, and building more loyalty and trust with their brand. So let's talk about our audience, how people shop online, so we can better understand where AR fits in the consumer journey. The consumer is in one of two mindsets. The first is hedonic. I'm in this mindset most of the time. I love shopping, it's very engaging for me. I like to socialize, have fun, see what's new, see what styles are out there. On the other side of the coin, the mindset could be utilitarian. I want to fulfill a need, I know exactly what I need, I want to get it as fast as possible. The mindset could also fall somewhere in between. Say I need a new pair of sunglasses, I have that need, but I want to see what's new and what's fun to treat myself to something special. It's important with AR that we consider the funnel. The funnel is the path the consumer takes to make a purchase, starting with awareness. The consumer has to be aware that your brand exists. And once I'm aware and I'm interested, I want to obtain a lay of the land to see what your brand offers. Next, I might start considering a, a specific product or a, a few different products and start comparing it to other brands. And I show intent when I add it to my cart or share with a friend or save the product for later. Next is evaluation. This is where AR plays a pivotal role in getting me to that purchase. Evaluation takes a lot longer in terms of shopping sessions for visual categories like furniture and fashion. Sometimes it can take weeks or months for a consumer to make that decision to purchase and AR can move the consumer through evaluation at a much quicker rate by giving them that virtual product to engage with and experience through realism. When I'm talking about AR and shopping and commerce, I'm talking about virtual try-on. Virtual try-on lets you engage with products and try them on, on your person, in your space. Here are some examples of successful campaigns we run within Facebook and AR ads. We have a few design considerations to share. Spark is, was happy to announce yesterday that we have Spark guidelines coming very soon to our website where you'll be able to access. So I'm going to share a few that are top of mind for shopping experiences. The first is aligned with existing paradigms. So users are already used to certain gestures when it comes to cameras and their phones. We're gonna offer you some of these paradigms um, in order to be able to use them in AR Studio so you won't have to think about how, how to optimize for the best way to interact with a product. 
you're welcome to create your own paradigms, but we'll have some options available for you in the near future. Next, be mindful of the effort required. This is one I really want to bring home. Having that um, visual or the language right up front, telling them exactly what they need to do and getting it out of the way is the best way to go about it. Um, people are used to experiencing their phones in a laid back and passive environment and asking them to lean in is a lot of effort that we're asking them to do, moving their phones. Um, so we'll also have these options for you coming soon. Be realistic. So not only is it important for the product to look realistic, it's also important for the variations that you choose, whether it's your color picker, which we now have the color picker API available, um, but encourage the brands you work with to use realistic swatches, such as makeup lipstick swatches or the furniture material itself, so that they can visually identify as they interact with the product that they're getting the best option and understanding what it will be like in real life. Next, try to limit the on-screen controls. We'll soon have templates that are available, but most importantly, it should, the focus should be on the AR experience itself, and the AR experience should speak for itself versus adding um, a ton of controls there for you. And in the future, we'll have Shop Now available so that you can directly link to your product pages. Next, test on a diverse media set. So AR Studio lets you upload as many videos and images as you like, uh, it's very important to test on different face shapes, different complexions, so that you can see how all of your effects will look. We want everyone to look beautiful as their natural self, and it's important to stay true. So don't use any face whitening um, def or deformation at all. Increasing the eyes or lips is not recommended. Uh, we want them to look best as their natural selves. And new tech. So we've been working the last few months on some new technologies we're excited to share with you. The first was mentioned yesterday, uh, commerce blocks. So instead of having to create all of your effects and all of the details separately, the interactions, the models, you'll soon be able to drop your models in and have all of the correct paradigms and color picker available to you. Next, we have photorealistic makeup shaders. So we're taking incoming radiance from the face and able to estimate the lighting of the scene and apply it to the AR effects themselves. So it feels a lot more immersive. This is a before and an after of our new lighting technology. The same technology can also be used for lighting simulation. Here's an example here using some studio lights. You can imagine we, we can make a lot more interesting lighting scenes, such as for makeup, it could be ring lighting or makeup mirror lighting. Um, you could also simulate different times of the day, such as daytime or nighttime, so they know um, how that product will look if they're going out during the day or out during the night. So we're excited to help you make shopping easier. Always start with mapping the consumer journey and the funnel, and think of the type of shopper, whether they're hedonic or utilitarian. Next, Spark helps you create more quality experiences and additional realism to, that will really bring products to life. Thank you very much.